said when he was in Nashville, I'm going to borrow this. Brother Ron, I hope you listen to this later. Brother Ron said when he was in Nashville, he said they laid $60,000 on the table. He said, if you'll sign this contract today, we will, we will put you forward and you'll do music in Nashville. He said, brothers, he said, I can't do that. He said, because God has saved me. And God told me not to do that. He told me to sing gospel music. And he walked away from that. But he said the old guy was standing there with a cigarette pointed up out of his mouth. And he said, boy, you're going to the top. He said, boy, you're going to the top. He said, you know how you're going to the top, Brother Ron? said, no. How am I going to the top? He said, because I'm holding the ladder that you're going on. <laughs> hey, some of us need to climb that ladder and let somebody put a fire on the bottom rung so we don't get you on up the ladder a little quick, right, man? But how many of you know, with Jesus, I'm going up. Somebody say, with Jesus. I'm going up. Stand to your feet in the house this morning to look to heaven and say, Lord, beat me up, Jesus. Any of y'all watch Star Trek? Beam me up, Jesus. Beam me up, Jesus. Come on, if you all future trekkers or former trekkers, whatever you want to call them, have you ever know the Lord is good to you today? You got breath in your body? You moving on your own today? You didn't come in here on a stretcher and life support? Amen. You may have had to hop and walk slow, but have you understand? Oh, well, I'm not going to tell that to you. I'm going to show it to you in a few days to come. But anyway, i got another secret to release to you here in, I mean, here in the future. But I want you to understand I'm going up. Say we're going up this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you in this house today, God, we thank you, Lord, for our family and friends that have gathered. Lord, as one body, as one voice, as one united remnant in this house, Father God. Yeah, I feel that. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we are still one united remnant. Father, we are the body of Christ called together in this city, in this North Bay County, in this North uh, uh, Holmes County area, God. Lord, over this North Florida area, Father, we're here to impact change. We're here to cause people to come to see you and know you as Lord and Savior. And Father God, there's something about our praise that you love. You inhabit our praise this morning in this house. Lord, you inhabit our words. You inhabit our worship. You inhabit our soul. And God, I pray that you would tune our ears what the Spirit would have to say to the church today. Father God, that you would want our ears to hear and our hearts to sense and know and our mind to comprehend what the Word of the Lord has to speak. In this hour, I declare that God, we're going over because you made us overcomers. Lord, that we are victorious because you said we have victory in Jesus and we give you praise in the name of the Lord. Come on, let's worship the Lord as the praise team comes to lift up the name of Jesus in this hour. Help us, church, and shout.
speak to me. God hadn't spoke to me like this in a long time. See, when I used to come to Graceville, when Craig and Greg were still alive, God would do something to me every time I would drive up here. And it didn't matter what I was going through or what I was facing or what I felt like. Every single time, God would do something in me. And it would mess me up to a point that y'all keep playing. To a point that um, I would be weeping and God would be speaking to me on an intimate level that just doesn't happen all the time. And everybody that has been a Christian can attest to the fact that God does not always speak to you the same way. And the intimacy and the closer you get to God, when you feel that intimacy, that what he speaks to you means something different on a different level, right? So we're coming back up here, and God is pouring stuff into me like I had never felt before. And me and Jana had just gone through some things, and we were struggling, and I asked God, I said, why? I said, why Graceville? Why here? What is here that is so important that I moved my family up here? In the middle of nowhere, I'm sorry if you live here, in the middle of nowhere where there's nothing to do, there's barely anywhere to eat, like I'm not used to that. I came from a city where you go five minutes down the road, you got everything you need, right? And I'm not hating on the country because I love the country. And I said, God, why, what is here? I said, this is frustrating me. And he said, if I told you what I was going to do, then you wouldn't praise me for it when it happens. If you know what God's going to do before he does it, it takes the whole factor away from him getting the blessings and the glory and the honor. And we're sitting here singing this song called Battle Belongs. And I'm sitting here. We're talking about fighting on our knees, right? We're talking about in uh, I call it a righteous indignation. When you get angry at the enemy. Yeah. The thing about it is, some people look at me while I'm up here playing guitar, and I look mad, and I look like I'm going to snap the neck off the guitar. <laughs> it's not because, it's, it's the way God put it into me, because when I get mad and I start playing the guitar like that, I'm thinking of the things that the enemy is trying to destroy yeah. and take from this church and from these people. Yes. You have to understand that when we started this church, there was plenty of people. Then there was a spirit of offense, drove people yeah. off. Then there was addiction, there was this, there was that. I'm sick and tired of Satan trying to take what's ours. Yeah. So when you sing this song again, if we are going to sing it again, I want everybody to get on your hands, or on your hands. Get on your feet and tell God and the enemy, more importantly, what you are going to take back. Because it's not a pathetic little prayer that's going to move the enemy. He's not scared of you if you're sitting there and you're not doing anything about it. He's only scared of you when you begin to stand and fight. And whether that's on your knees or whether that's in your prayer closet, we have to stand and fight. This song means something today. And we're going to sing it and we're going to sing it boldly and proclaim and take back this city. God did not tell me what he did, what he brought me here for in this city. But he's going to do something. Until it's done, I'm not going anywhere. That's so right. let's sing this again. Yeah.
telling you the devil's not hiding anymore. And the attacks that he's coming, y'all play please. The attacks that are coming are very blatant against God's people. In this past week, when Justin's talking about the things that we've been dealing with, fear has tried to grip my heart really bad recently. And there was a few days where I kind of wallowed in it. And then I beat myself up for it because I said, God, I know who you are. I know what you've done in my life. How dare I take a day or two to wallow in what I was feeling when I know I'm a child of God. I know that I'm a daughter of the King. I know who I am in Him. Why did I allow the devil to come in and lie to me? Why did I allow him to take my joy, my peace, my comfort? And a lot of times people think because we're on this side of the platform that we don't deal with things. Can I tell you that's not true? We probably deal with more. Why? Because we're on our knees. We're warring for this church. We're warring for the people. We're warring for the families. We're warring for the city and the nations. And the thing is, is when you step into that realm of glory with God, the attacks are going to come. And they're going to get stronger. And they're going to get Everything that we need, the deeper that you get. 
hit, the stronger the attacks will come. But you know what? The stronger he gets. Amen. The stronger he gets, church. We want to sing this song over you. We've been declaring this song. And I want to sing this because the pastor, Pastor Angie, has been talking about it. But we have seen miracles in this church already, whether y'all know it or not. Yeah. We have prayed and miracles have happened. Thank you, Father. And we have done that. And the enemy has tried to come in and snatch that. Yes. Come on. And we're going to declare this song. Come on, the Bible says make a joyful noise. So if my throat cracks, I don't care. I'm making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because it's not for me, it's for Him. The audience of one. We're going to sing this and declare this over you this morning.
This is the place yes. where the Spirit of the Lord abides. Yes. Yes. The devil is so mad yes. and angry with this ministry in this house and this place and you. But we don't care what he says. Amen. We don't care what he does. He's not capable, nor is he able. What God has placed in order, it will come to pass. Yes. Amen. Everybody in this house who has a physical need right now, Jenna, I want you to sing this come aloud line one more time. I want you to place your hand if you're if it's proper and decent to do. And place your hand on your body in the place of the place in the area where you need a healing. And I need you this morning to hear the word of the Lord being released to you, not to your neighbor, not to the church, not to the pastor, but hear the word of the Lord being released to you. Come alive in the name of Jesus. What's going on in this house right now? That's right. You can't go to every church on the corner and have, oh, you'll have a church service and you'll have a word and you'll have singing, but you might not feel the anointing like I feel. The, I hear the word of the Lord saying that the waters at the pool of Shalom are dry, are, are troubled, and the angel of the Lord is here. I was sitting on the back row and began to worship, and the Lord began to say to me that the presence of my angel. Are here to protect the attack of the enemy from destroying what's trying to be accomplished in this house by the enemy. The enemy don't have enough devils in hell to destroy what God has said. And only a third of the angels fell with him. That leaves two thirds in heaven. Somebody hear me. That God is not nor will he ever be defeated. Can you hear me this morning? So if your hands are in your places there on your body, if it's somewhere, just put it on your head if you can't put it nowhere else. And I don't want you to see it or hear it's for nobody else but for you. The waters are troubled, the Lord said. Now is the season. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Say it, Jim. Come alive.
it's not going to be emotional up and down and up and down and up and down. God said we level that thing out by the Spirit. You are the bride of Christ. You are the children of God. You are not called to be up and down. You're called to be strong, steadfast, and immovable. The Lord said always unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God said quit judging yourself. Quit running yourself down. Quit demeaning yourself. Quit saying you're not worth it. Quit saying you're not entitled to it. Quit saying you can't have it. Quit saying that it won't ever happen. I hear the Lord say, to curse the lie from hell and believe the word of the Lord. Come alive in the name of Jesus. So I'm not saying I'm just anybody else who wants to come. We fix them knowing you right now. The Lord said, Stop right now. I, I want you to take this soul, spread it around, give it to every lady in this house. What the enemy has meant for evil, God will turn around. Yes. Yes. Jesus, you drew a line in the sand today. You drew a line in the sand today. And it stops because of your declaration. Because of your decree, God said. I'm going to have these ladies pray and anoint your neck and your back and your shoulders. And I'm not going to touch you, darling. But the Spirit of the Lord is going to rain down on you this week. Come on, ladies. I'm, this is not me. See, God, I'm obeying you. You told me to surround her with the ladies of the house. Ladies in the house, if you can't, you just raise your hand. I'm not leaving you out. I'm just saying, I know some of you kind of just, you, you just sitting and relaxing this morning. But I just, I'm not leaving you out. I'm not saving anybody out. I'm just saying, Lord, we decree enough is enough. <laughs> Lord, we decree enough is enough. Satan, you hear the word of the Lord. By the stripes of the blood of Jesus, which you hate and you can't stand, we say in the name of the Lord, she is healed, she is whole, she is restored, she is renewed, she is revived, she is made complete in the name of Jesus. Now, Holy Ghost, you touch her right where she stands. Come on, God, we praise you right now. Come on, we praise you right now, Father God. Lord, we surround her with these intercessors right now. Father, we surround her with these prayer warriors in this house. All over in the chairs that are seated, as well as those that are standing in this uh, front area, God. We decree that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, it's not because I said, it's not because these ladies are praying that they said, it's because you uttered a decree from heaven and somebody had ears to hear what the Spirit's saying to the church today. And God, we release the word and the sound from heaven and we declare that it is done in the name of Jesus. I declare that it is done in the name of Jesus. I declare that the growth in that throat area has to go back to the pits of hell in the name of Jesus. I declare that that spine is in a line with the healing word of Jesus. I declare that the testimony will come forth, that the pain will cease, that the struggle will break, and a new season dawn on upon you this day in the name of Jesus. You may sit in a Lord, this is the house of miracles. This is the place of salvation. This is the place of miracles. Place of healing in the name of Jesus. Read that over at the ACA. Read that over at the Bible. 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 Read that over at the Bible.
Father, we give you praise for the victory. We praise you for the breakthrough. This is the season of breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. We are the people of breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We'll preach in a minute. We'll do other things as the Lord allows. But right now, the Lord said the waters are stirred in the spirit and the realm of the, of the Holy, Holy Ghost. And God said it's time. It's now time. Not about to tomorrow. It's now time today. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that fire from heaven would fall on this property, on this community, on this county, on this North Florida area. And that true revival will hit again. We prophesy to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And we declare that there is a sound of revival, a sound of restoration, and a sound of healing in the name of Jesus. Coming again on the earth, Lord. Give your praise, Jesus. Gonna flow with this thing for a minute here. Come on, uh, Sister Janet. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but then again, I'm not. So, Sister Janet said to me a while back, she said, Brother Keith, I feel like the Lord has put the gift of healing on in my life to operate. And so, I'm just gonna put that uh, that in motion in the Lord of Rose. Stretch your hands to work, Sister Love, right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise right now that you touch her. Lord, we've already prayed for her from the beginning of the service, but we stretch for
Vanessa, if I'm Leslie's husband or whatever. And uh, it's been, the past couple of weeks have been hard for me. Uh, I grew up in church. I was never, I was an average teenager growing up and stuff. And I've done things that I'm not proud of. I've done things that I shouldn't have. Um, a couple of Thursdays ago, I woke up and I was throwing up blood. Um, went to the hospital, asked Leslie to come in there and make sure it was blood. So I went to the hospital and they, you know, got everything out of my stomach, had emergency surgery. Uh, the next day, they came in and told me that my liver, my kidneys, were failing. The average person with their liver and the kidney function should be around eight, not around seven thousand. Within days, I say days, days. God touched my life, touched and healed me, and within five days, eight days, I was out of the hospital with my liver and my kidney function back to normal. To normal. To normal. From 7,000 back to 80. I just felt the need to come up here and just and share that, that it doesn't matter how bad you think you're off. The power of prayer is in it. I've had this church praying for me. I had my mama's church praying for me. I had church in Baskin praying for me. Everybody was praying for me. It's tomorrow I go back to see my specialist, but I'm still praying that I'm still seeing them normal levels to be insane. Back at 80 instead of 7,000. I just, I just felt the need to come up here and share that with all y'all. Jesus. Stop, Joe. Stop, Joe. Stop. Come here, Joe. Come here, Brother Nick. Now, the Bible says, the Bible says, Keith didn't say it. The Bible says, we are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Any of y'all ever struggle with situations that you just can't seem to get over? Anybody besides me? I mean, seriously, come on, put your hands up. I, I need you to understand what I'm about to do and say. And I'm only doing what I'm about to do because the Spirit of God. See, we don't understand everything. But I know this one thing. As long as long as there's breath, there's hope. Brother Greg used to sing a song, as long as I have breath, I will praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some of us, you know you messed it up yesterday or the day before, the day before, or the day before. But yet, when you take a situation like Joe's went through. And it's a miracle of God that he he's alive. And I'm going to tell you, the first day I walked in the hospital and I saw the yellow in his eyes, and I said to my wife on the way home, God's going to have to move. But God has moved. But don't stop there. Because God is still moving in Job. Amen. So, Brother David, I'm going to ask you to help me right now. Because we're going to release the word of the Lord over this young man. The devil would not fight you, Job, if he did not fear the gift of God inside you, Job. I'm going to say it as long as I live and as long as I know you, I'm going to say it. Because I know this. Jesus never gave up on Keith Bowen. Jesus never gave up on you either. So, Brother David, if you'll come stand right here with me.
stretch your hands toward him. And Joe, I want you to do exactly what I say. And I want you to do this as if there was nobody in this room but you and God, your creator. I want you to say, Father God, I acknowledge you as my, fa as my father. I ask you to help me in my struggles. I ask you to break me free from all that I have said or done. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for my actions. I'm sorry because I know you gave your life for me. Joe Hoffer, you died, Jesus, so I could live. So, Jesus, I'm asking you to deliver me, to set me free, to love me, and help me to love myself. There it is right there. There it is. Now, Father, Brother David, help me with it, right? Yeah, come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Deliverance is in the house right now. Yeah. something the Lord spoke to me a couple of days ago and I told Andrew Jan or one of them somebody whoever I told you what happened in that hospital is first of all because of God's mercy and one other reason your faith God did this because of you Make no mistake about it. I don't care what happened after. You need to hear me. The Lord spoke it to me a few days ago. And I told either Angie or Channel One. I said, God didn't do that just because of that. No, no, no. God did that because you were the woman that was stood in the gap. And you laid hold of the promise. And you laid hold in the day night in the night scene. Hold on, hold on. Calm down just a minute. You need to understand because God said you're not through. God said, this is just a starting place for what I have in store for you. You're going to go bigger and higher than you've ever seen before. And from this day forward, from this day forward, you don't let any bad thing come out of your mouth about anybody, your kids, your children, your husband, your home, your future, your finances, your business, your friends, not a word. Because God said that I have given you the power to speak life in the midst of death. And you got a living testimony right here. If the devil ever tried to tell you to do it again, you tell him to shut his lying mouth because 
God has given you a living witness of the power of faith. In the name of Jesus, I give God the praise. Come here, Gunner. Come here, London. Right here, right now. I don't care. We'll preach one day, someday. Right now, let's do this. Hurry up. The family that stays together, the family that prays together, the family that hit the little Stretch your hands and help me pray right now. God, we bind this father and this son, and the father and the young son, Gunner, and the father and the daughter of this family back together. I say today, all things are passed away. Behold.
Even though the enemy, oh God, I feel something. Even though the enemy knows about the expectation that you two are. Even though the enemy knows about the expectation of what you came for. You didn't ride in this town as a defeated hope. You didn't come in this place as a warrior without a weapon. But you came in this place today because of the authority that God knew that this might be. And when we realize that the enemy has attacked 
God gave us enough wisdom and knowledge. We know that, that, that it's not of God. Fear is not of God. When sickness comes in our body, it has to come in because you opened up the gate. When defeat comes into your body, it's because you open up the gate and say, I can't do this. I can't live this way. I can't accept this. Or I won't have, you know, and so sometimes it has to cross. But it cannot cross the bloodline yeah. of Jesus Christ. Right. Covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. It's the final covenant. It was accomplished. It was bought for. It was paid for because Jesus knew that we was nothing. He knew that we there was nothing we could do. And so therefore he stepped up and he said, I will take their place. I will cut the covenant with the, with the Father God. And that blood covenant, that covenant of healing, that covenant of victory, that covenant of blessing, all the blessings of Break the covenant. God will not break it. Oh, it's, it's an everlasting covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. So when you allow defeat, sickness, you need to stop and realize, you know, this ground, it's, it's anointed. It is. It is. Just in case you thought you forgot it, I just want to remind you again. This is God's church. Amen. Come on, brother. I hate, I'm not saying it, don't misunderstand, but I'm saying it to prove a point. Now, God told you this, that if every one of us lay and there's not a one man, it's still not going to stop the move of God. That's right, man. That's right. It makes no difference. The Spirit is reminding me that they'll come to those doors. That's right. Today. They come with that excitement. Yeah. They love to hear you sing. I do. They get excited with you. And they'll boost you. But when the excitement of the flesh leaves, then they go. But anything that is built upon the work of flesh will not stand. That's right. But there are those that, but the Lord wanted me to say this morning, there are those that's going to come and and you know, as they begin to come, the mighty movement, wave of God, and I sense it, even here this morning, a revival. I said a revival of hope, yes. a revival of joy, and a revival of expectation. In other words, it's going to push the doubt out. Come on now. Come on. It's going to push the doubt out. Push the doubt out. Yeah. And it's going to lift the faith. And God is sending men and women that, that's going to rise up with faith. And they're going to say, Pastor, we're going to conquer this mountain. Amen. 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 Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I was reading in the book of Samuel a few weeks ago. And I began to think there's more a teacher in me sometimes than preaching. And I get so excited when it comes to the word. But I remember Saul. You know, he was a people's king. There's a lot of churches that are built upon people's pastors. And see, Saul was built a pride and built a whole stage of pride up in Israel. They were a proud nation. Even Saul became a prophet and prophesied. He was a little religious. But yet he was king. But then the Bible tells us that there came the Philistines and Israel was been chastised and punished because of the way they had fallen and they had humiliated themselves and they had tried to humiliate God. The Bible tells us that they, as they, they began to pursue and Saul was being defeated and Saul was scared and afraid. And so he sent out a, a proclamation that nobody was to eat. I'll preach this some other time, but I just want to. <laughs> he said that nobody was to eat anything. And he said that 
all of a sudden, Jonathan, his son, and Jonathan's armor bearer. And I like this to say, I wish you were just bringing it to me. But the Bible said that Jonathan and his armor bearer looked and they saw, they said, we've got to get out from the outpost. See, the outpost was a legion of soldiers that were dispersed there. And they were sitting in a faraway distance watching. And Pastor, as I was reading that, there's a lot of people, sister, that are standing in the outpost. Uh -huh. yes. Come on now. They're sitting in the wayside. But God is telling us, like he put a stirring in Jonathan, he said, let's get out from the watchers. Some of them are watching today to see what kind of a person that you're going to be. See what kind of a person that you are displaying. How big that you display God. But there's all of a sudden and there's something other that is a stirring. It's called a revival. Brother, uh, Pastor yeah. Dave, Brother Davis, uh, it's called a revival that's going to move you. Yeah. And that God, said, God is telling me today that he's moving up. He's moving us into a new realm, to a new greatness. Uh, and there was two things uh, that they had they had to do was uh, when they went. When Jonathan looked at the situation, remember they were in a mountainside, and they looked, there was two big old cliffs, uh, and one of them was called Boaz, uh, which means uh, shining teeth. Uh, and I thought, you know, a lot of times, you got to go through beyond the devil. He's going to show his teeth. Uh, yeah. His teeth are going to shine. And yeah. in other words, uh, the main thing that he can bite. Uh, but I'm telling you, God can take the bite out. He got the bite out of the lion's mouth. And so uh, we, we realized it, and he said they had to go through that. And then uh, the other ones, it just set my mind, but there's another place it was called shining. In other words, the, the Bible said the devil was a shining light. But anyway, they had to crawl and get beyond that. And they had to get go over into a place called Macapai, which means that there was strength and there was improvement and sometimes you've got to go through these things yes. you got to go through you got to crawl behind the shining team you got to crawl behind yes. the, the brightness and the, the exploitation the devil always makes things look good yes. that's what he did to Adam and Eve he made the tree look good the Bible said it looked good to them they ate it but it was the wrong side of the tree in other words because it shines yes. it doesn't mean that it's pure but he, God began to show us and give us revelation and knowledge and he's bringing us to a new level and so, in other words as you climb and as you climb as you climb then begin to take and say well you know I'm leaving this back <laughs> come on now I said I'm leaving this back that's right you know yeah. warrior David was a great warrior yes Lord he started out with 400 Misfits. Thank you. That's another sermon. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible said there were nobodies. Said they were in debt. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of them had divorced and left their families. Thank you. But God taken those 400 and turned them into over 3,200 choice captains and warriors. Wow. One time he started out with four and then he went up to 600. And then at the end of his life, he had over 3,000 captains and leaders. You will never be a good soldier until you go through the battlefields and scars and right. things. What do you think the fire is for? Nothing to warm you up and make you feel comfortable with him. The word fire means strength. When they run the steel and the metal, it is strengthened by how hot the metal becomes. Yeah. And once it's been strengthened, then it's ready for a stronger foundation. Come on now. Um, Preach that. Good. When we have built our lives, our testimony, on the things that we have to suffer, you know. I don't know why that I would, you know, when, when God sets us in a position where we're at today, and 
then we look around and say, we can't have church, we don't have anybody. I think last week I was, it's my 60th week. Bible teaching, I drive 30 some miles to Enterprise, Alabama every Wednesday night. Pastor, as I was going somewhere the other day, I don't know the son, but I know the word. The word just came. I don't regret a mile that I've traveled. They must have been in the city. But I've traveled for the Lord. Amen. Because every mile I travel, yeah. it's victorious. Amen. I become a victorious. Amen. We have seen God transform a ministry in these two couple of lives. Two couples we got. There's seven of us told in this Bible study. You know, faithful. God spoke to me. The reason I was sharing it, He said, because you are faithful over a few things, He said, then I'm going to elevate you. Amen. Then the morning, the Lord began to speak. And He said, you're not just going to pastor. He said, but I'm going to send you to the Market Street. Oh, yeah. I'm a Market Street pastor. He said, that's where the people are hurting. It's like here this morning. It had been weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, I'm consistent. My wife can tell you. I spend more time studying than I do anything else. Every day I'm in the Word. The devil, you know, in my office is all fancy. I'm not saying it's praying. I'm not trying to announce nothing. I got degrees and certificates. I got bookshelves of notes, binder notes, teaching notes. Taught a Bible study class for 13 some years, you know. Devil said, "Wait, well, what's, what's this a purpose for? You, you don't have nobody to preach it to." That's but you know what? That's Every day, somebody I share it. Yeah. I share the word. So I preach it every day, and I said, "Devil, you have to stop me." You know, the only way you'll stop me, and you can't, you can't kill me. You know, because I'll come reincarnated into. You know, somebody else. I mean, brother, brother Greg Davis will never die as long as we got memories of him. And that's the same way with us. Amen. You know, and I'm going to leave something behind. You'll always remember. I remember that crazy jumping, running, whatever <laughs> you want to describe it. But I'm, I feel a run over devil. Come on. Yeah. I really did. I, when I, I just felt that when we were Brother. running. Accomplishing. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. When you can outrun the devil, you know, he's pursuing. They pursued Israel. He's pursuing you. But you don't have to stop waiting on him. That's right. Yeah. Don't be like the prophet, you know, throwing a party when he gets home. You know. But remember today, don't ever forget this, you're the winners. Amen. God showed up in this place this Amen. morning. Amen. Amen. You're a winner, buddy. Come on, that's right. I saw a completely new creation happen to you. I mean, like pastor. I, I have a gift of service. I saw a death spirit, you know, when you first walked up there. You had actually went through that. But I saw when God began to bring that old dead blood out with that new blood in. And I'm going to tell you the same thing that Jesus told the woman at the well, go and sin no more. Don't forget what God has done for you. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. This, this is the strongest thing that the enemy uses to fight. Yeah. We were we were at grandkids last night. And I got one grandson that makes over $100,000 a year. And 
and I was preaching one night, and I think it was in Pastor White's church. She was a guy came and I took my coat off, walked across, put it on my grandson David's shoulder, and he stood there. And I put that coat on him. And I said, Anyway, I won't go into all the details I want to show, but all my stained spots of dirty laundry out on the line for the neighbors to see and all that. But this young man, he thinks he's got the world by the tail. But I looked at him last night, and uh, you know, they were talking to their mom. I said, one thing we gotta watch is when Papa's around, can't drink no beer in front of him. I said, if they come up and I said, they're, they're running for me. I said, I'm going to follow them around, Sister David. I said, if there's nothing else, I'm going to start speaking in tongues. Right now. <laughs> Make him so miserable. But I looked at him last night. I pointed my finger at him. And he said, Papa, I got over $1,000 a week in bills. I said, money is not everything. Yes, I said, you can. Break this, I said, it'll take your family, it'll take your health, and I told him this one time before, I said, it'll take your good looks. <laughs> I preached a guy's funeral last week. He was 10 or 12 years younger than me. He was a, I pastored him 40 some years ago. Talented young man. He and his family played music. That he, this boy could sit down with a piano, he could write music, he'd play music and everything. But after we had left the church, moved on to other things, he became involved in alcohol and everything. And, and he looked like a 90 year old man. I mean, I told his daughter and him, I said, I wish I'd have brought some pictures that the enemy Took his health, took his good looks, yeah. took his talent, yeah. everything. And the last thing he left, he left a testimony, made a, a video, and said he had given his heart and life to the Lord, he made mistakes, he repented, and he said he wanted me to preach his funeral. And so I was able to preach his funeral to his kids. But I'm telling you, sin pays big time. Sin pays you full, everything that you sow, it pays you full course back in. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> well, Brother David was going to preach this morning, but having to know the Lord had other plans. I don't know what time it is, but I'm going to let you go with one thought in mind. We're going to do two things. How many of y'all ever went to school in your younger days? Now, some of y'all may not have to think back as far as others. How many of y'all went to your school and you made pottery? Clay. So, something out of clay. You made something out of clay. Come on, raise your hands. It ain't that. You ain't. Look, I, well, all right. Put your hands down. If you did not make pottery in school ever, raise your hand. Well, there's some in there. Brother Dave, see you <laughs> All right, for those of you you got your hand, how many of you know you ever seen anybody make pottery? Oh, yeah. No, no, just the ones that had their hands up. Not all y'all that already did it. Y'all know. All right, so you have to relate this. When you get in school and you got in school, Brother Dave was preaching that, or talking and I thought about this. When you get in school and you start making that clay or that whatever pottery, whatever it's made out of clay, right? It looks like a bowl when you get done with it. Or a cup. We made ashtrays. Was stupid yeah. this thing, right? <laughs> like, I guess they assumed in school that everybody smokes. You're going to make you here, Mom. I got an ashtray for you. Well, it's great, son, but we cut, we, we live for God. We don't smoke in this house. And, and I'm not, I mean, I'm just, that's the way it was. I don't know why it was that way, but that I brought home an ashtray. And my mom said, great, what do you want to do with this? We'll give it to the dog. Maybe he smokes. <laughs> but we made pottery. It, here's the point, brother. David started this, and I'm not going to preach it, but I'm telling you. When, it, when you got done with it, you put it in, the, uh, they gave it to the teacher. It looked like a bowl. It looked like a cup. It looked like whatever it was you 
made it. But it was not finished until one thing. Anybody know what had to happen next? It had to go in the fire. Don't amen me right now. It was not complete until it went in the fire. Oh, you could have put some color on it. You could have put a design in it. You could have made your mark or your emblem or whatever in it. But it was not complete until that thing went in the fire and came out of the fire. See, it couldn't just stay in the fire. It had to come out. Why? Because it had to be uh, uh, cooked or baked or whatever the word is, right? There's a word cured. I think that's the word. And here's the thing that what God has started in this house this morning, you know up until April the 1st, we were having revival type services. God was moving, prophesying, measuring people. And then that COVID thing hit again and then we had some issues again. And it's been kind of a, we just kind of made through. But today in this house, I'm here to tell you that the fire, we have been put back into the fire and God is ready to bring his people out. He's ready to bring you out. He's ready. He started. He's in. I like what Brother Dean said. I can run through a troop. Well, he didn't say that. I said this. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. How many of y'all look at me good? I ain't leaping over much without a trampoline. But with the Holy Ghost. Brother Davis, you remember the old Henson song? The Henson told the story. Any Henson fans? Some of y'all even get saved. Y'all don't know the Henson. My goodness. And I'm just kidding. The old preacher said they flew over the plane and they traveled to Israel. And on the way back, the preacher sang this song. It was a simple little chorus. He said, I'll never be the same again. I'll never be the same again. Since I walked where Jesus walked, I'll never be the same again. Have you ever known we've walked in the presence of Jesus in this house this morning? And I, you don't, if you didn't get a word, well, there's been plenty released. But have you ever noticed that we need to shout over the family restoration? Amen. Amen. Joe, faith Amen. is what always moves the hand of God. Amen. When you got out of that chair and you came over here, yeah. that was your step of faith. Amen. And what God honors is faith. Yeah. Now you're going to have to let faith lead you and guide you from this moment on. God has restored. Amen. God has revived. I'm not, I'm not prophesying doom or gloom. None of that junk. I'm simply saying, be led by faith Amen. and trust God and watch how fast you're going to grow up in the fire in Jesus' name. Amen. That was confirmation to you right there. Thus <laughs> saith. The word of the Lord. Hey, let me try that again, God. <laughs> Who wants to be next? It's not me. It's not me. It's him. I don't know what happened. We've never had that happen. Sister Jean, I'm going to put you on the spot one day. Help me remember. I'm not going to ask you. But you said something to me yesterday or the day before or whenever it was. You said that we were talking about this church. And you said something. Help remind me if you don't mind speaking. Uh, tell me what you said about the future of this house when we were talking. Would you do that real quick? Yeah, um, Pastor Pete was talking about how God led him here to preach on the hill of Graceville. And uh, and then, you know, you see the verses one united remnant. So God is moving in this place because he moves in places even where people don't even think, you know, where is Grace Mill? But <laughs> well, we're all here for a reason, and God is moving, and I, I see that, I mean, this is going to be a, a revival point. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is going to be where fire, the fire, it's already breaking out. And it doesn't matter that this house is not full, but it is going to be. Amen. And it's going to have to be enlarged. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear that word? Come on. Yeah. Did you hear that word? This is why I wanted you to hear it from her. Not because Brother Keith, because he always says stuff like that. But Brother Greg wanted revival. You know he lived for revival. 
If you knew Brother Greg, he would have revival. <laughs> he would bring to have revival when you were tired of having revival. <laughs> You're like, oh God, we have to go again. Here we go. It's been like night number 355. <laughs> Brother Greg coming out. Oh, we're having revival. We're having revival. Oh, Jesus. How many more? You know I'm telling the truth. You know I am. This is why I asked Sister Jenna, because she said this to me the other day. Outside, we were at wherever we was outside we were talking in the yard. So it was yesterday, my bad, I slept since then. Anyway, she, so, <laughs> so, now look, Sister Gina's new. I mean, she's family already. I don't give her a nickname, but she's family. But but look what God has spoke to the new folk that come in the house. Amen. In other words, those of us that have been here longer need to get excited again. Right. Come on. See, I told Aunt, I told Jenna the other day. I said. We moved off of what God said. What well, the, the devil's called it to set to settle on the side. The news wore off. You know, we're not in the honeymoon stage anymore. We've been here a year. But I'm telling you, the power of God is not ever in a honeymoon stage. That's right. It ain't just for a little while that the Spirit of God flows and moves. It will not be just for a little while that people don't get saved, healed, and delivered, and families restored. Amen. I mean, you know, we are one. United, United. United. <laughs> remnant, and this is our family. Amen. Amen. This is our church. Amen. I'm just going to give you permission. If you go out in the streets and you hear somebody talking bad about people of praise, you ball your fist up like this, <laughs> and you say, in the name of Jesus, devil, get him. I know what y'all thought I was going to say. Let's talk, Brother Keith. Yeah, all right, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Have you understand? Brother Chris, the seeds, me and him were talking. I've said this before. The seeds that have been laid in this ground are crying out. Yeah. We demand the harvest. Come on. That's something that God spoke to me and you. We were talking on the phone. And I ain't forgot it. The seeds that were planted. By your loved ones, your family, and your friends. They are crying out. We demand the harvest. Yes. The Bible says the harvest is ready. Amen. The laborers are few. Y'all want a word? There's your word to go home on right there. Stand to your feet all over the house. Have you been blessed this morning? Amen. If you can't go out of this house today and say something good about God, uh, thank you, sweetheart. If you can't say something about good about God today, you need to get somewhere and ask God to speak to you. Amen. When God restores, when God revives, see, because, see, it didn't just affect Joe. It didn't just affect Leslie, Brandon. I mean, Brandon, sorry. Sorry. I knew it. I was getting there. Gunner, London. Hey, hey, wait. I'm not done. You, me, us, our. It ain't just one. Come on. Yes, ma'am. You better say it, please. Come on. I got people standing on their feet. Well, I've had a lot of God's musical talking to me since Pastor David preached and everything. And first, I want to say what you said about the fire. I said from the moment this man stood up here the very first time to preach that he lit a fire inside of me. Then you said that fire is strength. God, you definitely giving me that. <laughs> um, and you talked about the foundation that it builds. And I just made a post about this Thursday about that we had come to church on Wednesday night and we prayed and we were building upon that foundation. Um, and that's because of your family. That's because of you and Pastor Angie. And what God, the fact you said yes to God and you came here. I didn't have the pleasure of knowing Pastor. But I know his son, and I know y'all, and I know everyone that's been affected by him. And the more I hear, it's almost like I, I knew him, like I feel like I got to see him. Um, but anyways, my point to all that was, you talked about my faith. Three Sundays ago, the ladies and I went to Fire and Glory in Panama City, and it was over. And as some of you know, and some of you don't, you know, Joe and I have had a really rough several years that have had us on the road of divorce. And uh, it was over Saturday night. And the lady who don't know me, she's never met me before, out of the blue looks at me and says, do you have a husband? 
And in that moment, you know, where Joe and I are at, it's kind of one of those I just paused. You know, I don't want to say yes, but I don't want to say no. And Janet was sitting there with me, and she looked at me, and she said, I don't know what it is. She said, but he's coming out of it. <laughs> and when she said that, you had to have been there. I lost it. Literally almost in the floor, my glasses fell off my face, I was in tears, because in my mind in that moment, he was coming out of the addiction. But what I didn't realize that was like five days later, he was gonna be laying on his deathbed. Yeah. I mean, we were talking transplant, which is still an option. We were talking so many things, and the doctors just kept saying, we don't understand it. With numbers this high, he should be laying in a deathbed can't walk, can't speak, he should be vomiting. We don't understand how he's walking. And all I could say was, but God. <laughs> and for me, I used to suffer from crippling anxiety. Crippling to a point I didn't, I worked from home, so I didn't have to be around people. I worked from home, so I didn't have to face, I didn't have to speak, I didn't, and anybody that knows me knows I like to talk. So <laughs> me not wanting to speak says a lot. Um, I would go to bed at night, and the moment I would go to sleep, I would wake up gasping for air because the panic were so crippling. But when this happened, I never panicked. I never once had fear. I never, yes, there was a moment where I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? But there was never the crippling anxiety that put me in the floor, balled up in the bed, ready to just give up. I never once got scared because those words, he's coming out of it. Everyone around me thought he was coming out of the addiction, but at the end of this, I realized, and I'm not saying that he's not because God can do it, but for me, that's what I held on to in the hospital because the doctors were saying, he ain't coming out of this. Yeah. He ain't, this man should not be doing this with these kind of numbers, and I kept saying, but that lady told me he's coming out of it. And for everybody, it all stood for something, but for me, it stood for it all. And I've only gotten rid of that anxiety because of God. I'm not, no longer on meds. I was on a very, very, very high dosage of anger meds because the anxiety was so bad that I literally would wake up in the mornings and it would make me feel better if I could have just rip somebody's eyeballs out of it. Like it just, it was so bad that from the moment I woke my kids up, I just, it just got like, the devil took over to a point that I wanted to lay down and die. And I'm now meds free. And I made it through that meds free. Believing and standing on that he was coming out of it. And we have to remember that not just Joe's situation, but we're all coming out of something. Amen. And the only way to come out of that is with our faith. Amen. And I watched him fear. I saw the fear of death in his eyes, and I've heard him say, I should just give up. It's just time to roll over now. I heard him say that. Actually, I heard him say that this morning. And he didn't think I heard him. And I said, what did you say? And he said, nothing. I'm talking to myself. I said, no, nah, I heard you. What did you say? <laughs> I wanted him to say it again so I could clarify. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But I felt God say, would you sit back and shut up already? <laughs> I did. And I heard him say, it's going to come around. Just give it a chance. And I heard him say, it's just time for me to give up. The reason was he felt great. And within 15 minutes, he was pouring sweat, which we have found out is a sign that when your liver is shutting down, that's part of it. And I said, well, come on, get up. You're going to church. That's what you drove 35 minutes for. You're going to church. We ain't going to the ER this morning yet. <laughs> and, and so I just say that to know that, that the only way we come out of it is with our faith. Amen. And Amen. we have to stand on that. Yeah. And because of God, you're building that fire and that foundation. And no matter what goes on in this building, we've got you and we've got God. Amen. Amen. And without you, it wouldn't be possible. Sure. Because God has given it through you to give to us. And I'm so thankful that you're here. <laughs> because I know you've changed my life. Whether you've done it to everybody else or not. Well, somebody say, but God. Now, let me, I know I got you on your feet, but just how would you like it if we had to have a service where we had Joe, Joe and Leslie 
and you and you and everybody get a microphone and take a turn telling what God has done. Yeah. Somebody? But would it be too long for you? Because, no, I ain't, I ain't picking on you, but I'm saying, would it be too long? Would we get tired of hearing about the no, miracles no, of God? No. So I'm saying that to you now. Get ready. Amen. Somebody say it with me, but God. But God. But God. But God. Well, I got you on your feet, so reach in and grab your gifts of love. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful to the house. Now, look at your neighbor real quick. If they got a gift to give in the offering, if they're not smiling, tell them to sit down. <laughs> Y'all know I've said that before. Listen, God is the source of this house. And like Jana said, there have been some there have been some hundred dollar offering days that you know barely covered gas. You know, and we don't get a salary, we get a love offering. But and that's not to say anything. I don't I, you know, we're trying to build up the house financially. And Lord, we're not broke. Somebody say, we ain't broke. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we ain't. We got money in the bank right now. Uh, thank God we got money. But the point is, if you don't give like the Word of God says, you don't need to give. Right. I, I, I don't hear many preachers say that, but you, you know what? It won't do you no good to put money in there if you're bitter and you're mad at God and you're upset and you can't be. The Bible said you got to give cheerfully. If you ain't going to do it by the Word of God, why do it at all? You're just fooling yourself. Amen. So look real good and see if anybody's smiling. If, if they ain't smiling, if they got money in their hand and they're not smiling, reach over here and tickle them or something. You ain't smiling. So, now, if you if you got money, you better smile. Well, I'm trying to teach you right. You'll be rich one day. Amen. So the Lord said, uh, well, ooh, hey, can you go back there and put my scripture up there? Come on, hurry up. It, 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 the computer? Oh, well. Well, we're just going to declare in the, in the name of the Lord, Malachi 3.10 and Luke 6.38. We'll just do that. The devil's not going to stop us. We just declare that Malachi 3.10 and Luke 6.38 is our portion, God. It's our promise, God. It's our word that we stand on. I declare that our families are blessed. Our finances are blessed. Our businesses are blessed. Our health is blessed. Your word is blessed. Your spirit is moving in the house. Thank you, God, for what you've done in this house today. And God, I pray that as we get ready to leave this building right now, that we will say, surely it has been good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. And for that, God, we will sing your praise as we leave this place today. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. We declare increase, double increase, and favor and blessings be upon you. Come and give your gifts of love. And as you do, shake hands, hug next, love somebody. We appreciate you. Increase.